Okay, to use this tool, you step on the bar, and this has already been broad forked, so it goes in pretty easily, and you work it all the way down, and then come back and just open up the soil like that. You go back about six inches, in my opinion. There's different opinions about that. Well, you can see that's already been broad forked. Well, I'm going to go back a little further where it hasn't been broad forked. And that would be right, right here. So it doesn't go in as easily. You got to step on it. You got to work on it. And you can kind of break it open like that. And get up with both feet. When you got it in the ground a ways, work it down. Okay, we're down 12 inches. Right on the bars, right on the soil, and. That's breaking open the soil, like that. So, now if your ground is wet, this is getting a little dry for this. If your ground is wet, it'll go in easier. You can, all, you can rock it back and forth. That helps break it open. And See, that didn't take too much effort. And then here's where I've already brought forked. You can put it in full depth pretty darn easily. This is a Chico earthworm. This is actually a small one for Chico. These things, uh, night crawlers, bass love them. Um, and it's the kind of thing that a rototiller would have chewed up, of course, and killed. We'll let it go back into the dirt. So you may be wondering why bother with a broad fork. I think that uh, the biggest answer is soil roots, roots in the soil. To maximize the growth of your vegetables and, and fruit trees too, you want your ground to be opened up so the air and water and nutrients can all be available to the roots. The broad fork opens up a compacted soil deeper than a rototiller. A rototiller goes down maybe six inches, five inches, six inches. And besides all the fossil fuel issues, this goes down 12 inches. And you can use a regular spading fork. It's about seven or eight inches wide. And this, the width on these tines is 18 inches. So we're looking at two and a half times the width and also, we're looking at using um, body mechanics. You've got the ability to stand on this thing, which means you can use your weight to drive it in the ground. And you've got two handles. So when you pull back on it, like a spading fork, it's one handle. It often has a D handle, which I think is not that good of an idea. If I had a spading fork, I would want this type of handle. But I prefer having two handles like this. Now, when you're working up new ground or working up your garden bed, whether it's new or not, I would spread my amendments before broad forking because when you broad fork, you open up a crack and the amendments can filter down to the deeper levels. So if I had amendments on there, they would be mixed in just by the broad forking. It's going to give you aeration, uh, water penetration, and mixing the nutrients deeper in the soil without inverting the whole soil like a rototill does, and without collapsing the soil structure like a rototill does. You've got clods. You've got vines like that, and then you've got these clods. And these clods have earthworm holes in them. So um, this is a good mix of um, soil particle sizes, soil aggregate sizes for your garden. And then you want to rake out the top and make a nice seed bed, which is easy to do once you are finished broad forking. For instance, this area here has all been broad forked, and I can run a rake over this and smooth it out in just a couple minutes. Now, if you encounter a rock, or let's say, let's say you stick it next to this concrete and decide you're going to pry up this concrete, you're going to break the handles. 
So you don't want to do that. And if you have big, large rocks in your ground like this, um, those should be dug out. When you encounter one and you encounter, you, you start torquing on the, the handles and the handles are bending, which they will do, they won't just break, they'll bend first. Then, then you want to back off and find out what the obstacle is. If it's a pipe, it's, if it's a big rock. Um, but uh, I think these things should to do really well. The few that we've sold so far, people are very happy with. And I think uh, we'll be seeing a lot of these spread around the country soon. I'm preparing a seabed here. So I'm using the rake, a bow rake, that's my preference. And the process, we can break up a few of these clods and just raking through, you're gonna get a nice smooth surface. It's, uh, and you can rake up like big clods or sticks, things like that, you can go to the end of the row. And you'll end up with a plantable seed bed right after broad forking. I broad forked this maybe two weeks ago. And it's a little dry to do this right now. These clods are a little harder than they would be if they were uh, freshly forked. So you can see it's pretty easy to get your ground flat and a fairly fine clod size where the seeds are going to go.